All right, Brad, let's talk a little bit more about that inflation print that we got out this morning. The PPI data showing a slight uptick in inflation on a monthly basis. However, the Fed does look on track to cut by 25 basis points at next week's meeting. Here to break all of this down, what the data is telling us about the Fed's next move, we want to bring in Brian Seitel. He is the Bonson Group's Senior Managing Director and Partner. Brian, should we be talking about 50 basis points? Well, there's a 17 percent chance now that, that they'll go 50 basis points, but I don't I don't think they will. But what I would want them to do is 50. I just don't think that they'll they'll actually get there. I think 25 is what we'll end up getting unless something changes. And we're what, six, seven days away now from that decision. So I think we'll get 25 out of this. Why do you want 50? Um, I think if you look at the bond market where two year yields are compared to Fed funds at 175 wide, I think the bond market is kind of crying out for a 50 cut. And I think that might be wishful thinking. Um, I think that when you're starting at a Fed funds of five and a quarter, starting at a 25 basis point cut really doesn't do a whole lot other than telegraph that you're going to move in that direction. And so 50 would be a little bit more meaningful on what they're trying to accomplish. But again, I, that's what I would want. And I think they'll start with 25. Brian, what's the environment then for equities for stocks at this point? Is it favorable or, or given some of the concerns that Omer was just laying out, I guess, should investors be bracing maybe for more of a downside risk? Well, I think it depends on what part of the market you're looking at. I think part of the market is um, quite expensive and quite overvalued. And I think if you have growth that is going to slow, again, it's, you can't really have a soft landing without data starting to look a little softer here. And so some of this stuff that we're seeing, I, it doesn't necessarily freak me out, per se. Um, but again, I, I think there's part of the market where it would, and that is more of bigger technology names that are just trading at higher valuations versus some of the value-oriented names, maybe some of the staples, maybe some of the defensive uh, names out there, utilities, uh, healthcare. These are more reasonably priced, and historically, in a rate cutting cycle, these tend to outperform uh, some of those other segments of the market. You know, that's gotten us back into the realm of thinking about growth at a reasonable price, Brian. So, where are some of your favorite, as as you know, folks like yourselves, folks far more intelligent than me, would call it the Garpy areas of the market that seem attractive right now? Uh, if you're looking for uh, perhaps the best play to see reasonably priced growth in your portfolio. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, some of those names, uh, whether either candidate gets into the office, I think there's a, a good amount of spending coming on the infrastructure side. And so I think you can look at some of those industrial names, which are in that sort of GARP area, the growth at a reasonable price um, in there as well. We like the energy space also and financials as well. I think all of those, you can get sort of high teens to maybe those low kind of 20 uh, multiple uh, uh, numbers out of uh, out of those names. And I think those will do better than some of the 40 and 50 times, you know, technology names. Brian Seitel of the Bonson Group. Thank you so much for taking the time. I appreciate it.